Now, I wasn't a fan of the early CVT transmissions because they didn't ride right. They had a lot of problems. Take Honda Civics, for example. Now, back in 1998, you could get a CV transmission, a special Honda Civic H. And unfortunately for Honda and the people who bought them, they had many failures. Lots of them broke around 30,000 miles or a little bit more. They didn't have them down pat. Now, this baby here is a 2015 Civic. It has a CVT transmission, and it, too, had some problems. Now, as far as I can decipher, and these 2014-2015 Honda Civics with the CVTs had a problem with the drive pulley shaft in the transmission. They had some of them failed and they had to recall about 140,000 of them. Honda's solution was to upgrade the software to fix what they call a stress problem. That the shaft was being stressed too much at certain speeds, at certain RPMs, and the software was going to reduce the wear. Now, being a mechanic myself, kind of a cop-out solution really, because if they had a problem with those shafts, let me tell you, they would have had to rebuild every single one of those. That would have cost them a fortune. So their sort of cop-out was, uh, we'll reprogram them so it will have less wear. Now, Honda's a good company. They make their own transmissions, just like Toyota does, and they seem to have fixed their problems. I haven't seen any problems with the Honda CVTs 2016 up yet. So it seems that they figured out what was wrong. But really, they should have rebuilt all the transmissions these cars would have cost them too much money. So they did a software fix, which as far as I'm concerned, a lot of companies do that. Chrysler does it in a lot of theirs. But I do have to say at least the Hondas, they're not like the Chrysler's where they tell you, I oh, will reprogram it and it'll work right. They reprogram and the thing still doesn't work right. These things actually work perfectly fine, but what was happening is with some of them, the shafts would break and then they wouldn't work at all. It wasn't like they'd shift bad all the time. They would work perfectly fine until the things broke. But as I said, as time goes on, they seem to be perfecting these CVT transmissions for what they are. They don't have gears, they have belts and pulleys and drum systems. They're a different system that keeps the engine theoretically at the most efficient RPMs when you're going down the road. It's a very complex computer controlled system, yes. But they do work a lot better than they used to. As you can see when we go into the Honda, yeah, it just looks like a regular transmission. doesn't look that different than this Honda. It has the same oil drain plug here, just like the old ones did. They don't look all that much different, but internally, they're radically different. Now, if you compare the CVT transmissions to another newer style one, the dual clutch transmissions, the dual clutch transmissions started out as speed burners in European cars. What they basically are is a standard transmission that has two physical clutches with clutch plates that wear out over time that a computer automatically shifts them and since there's two clutches they always have to have an even number they can have six speed eight speed ten speed whatever the problem with them is since they're basically a standard transmission though they have two dry clutches instead of one like when you drive it they do wear the clutches the clutches are dry clutch all by themselves dry you're not shifting it the computer is it's still got cylinders that have to release the clutch so that it can shift gears, the clutches do eventually wear out on them. So although they perform really well, because basically it's a standard transmission with a lot of gears that's shifted by a computer, when they break, whew, they cost a fortune to fix, plus they just flat wear out. Like a standard transmission car, eventually the clutch wears out. The friction material wears out, gets too thin, starts to slip. And on these dual clutch transmissions, it's not like just pulling a transmission, slapping a clutch and putting it in. It's a lot more involved than that. Being computer driven, if you put a new clutch in a dual clutch transmission, you have to have a factory scan tool and a mechanic who knows what he's doing. And the computer has to relearn how the clutch is set up. If you ever had a standard transmission car yourself and had a new clutch put in, you'll notice when you stepped on the clutch pedal, it's gonna feel different. You gotta get used to it. Well, the computers have to get used to it, so it takes a very competent mechanic with some very expensive equipment, hours of setting it up to make it work right. So it's a very expensive endeavor to replace the clutches on them, and they do wear out. They physically wear out. Now, these CVT transmissions, they don't have the performance of the dual clutch by any stretch of the imagination. They also don't have dry clutches in them that wear out. If a CVT is made correctly and you change the fluid regularly, they can last an awful long time without any expensive repairs. That is, if they're made right. I got customers with Toyotas that have CVTs. They still shift fine. All they did was every 50, 60,000 miles have me change the fluid. That was it. 
and they still work the way they were designed. Plus, the more modern CVTs like some of the new Toyotas that I've tried out, they're kind of a hybrid. They have a start gear that the car first starts out on one gear and it runs on an actual gear and then once it gets to a certain speed, it turns over to the CVT transmission and then the rest of it is CVT. So instead of having the lag, a lot of CVTs don't take off from stop that well, they figured out how to do it. So they use an actual gear to start your car off, then it switches over to the CVT after. So as time goes on, these engineers are no fools. They're starting to make some pretty good systems. Now, let's check this one out and see how it works. Jack it down because I was working on it. Now we'll take it for a little spin, see how the transmission shifts. I'll give it a little gas and see how it takes off. Nothing outrageous, but it goes. And you can see it doesn't shift like a conventional. You don't hear a ring, a ring, a it tries to stay in the best power band that it possibly can. Normal driving, the RPMs kind of stay. They go up and down a little bit, but it's, it's pretty smooth. And this being a 2015, it doesn't have all the flaws the early Honda ones do. And trophy, the newer ones are even better and do take off better. But this one, hey, it's got some mileage on it. It still works fine. As you can see, it's got 85,000 miles on it. It still worked perfectly fine. Not a race car. This isn't a Civic R. <laughs> it's a plain old Civic. And here when we're accelerating up the hill, you can see it still goes pretty good. You can hear the engine. It's not over revving or anything. And it isn't particularly slow. It's got decent acceleration. Now it's certainly not a race car, but it's a dependable economy car. And as I said, just like Toyota, Honda makes their own transmissions. And over time, they make them better. They don't just build something and scrap it. They improve it over time. And this being a 2015, I tried out 2020 Civics. They're even better than these. Now, of course, who knows? They're 2020. How long would they last? This thing's five years old. It's got 85,000 miles. It's still purring along. It's had nothing but fluid changes in it. There's no work that was done to the thing. And it works exactly the same as it did when it was new. Because you have to face the facts that gas mileage ratings and all that, CVT transmissions are probably here to stay. Now, I've been in the Toyota 8-speed automatic transmissions. I like them a lot better. It costs a lot more money to make one of those 8-speed automatics than it does making one of these CVTs. I myself assume that the better cars, the faster cars, they're going to probably go to 8-speed automatics in a lot of them. The dual-clutch transmissions, they'll probably always be around some way for fancy race cars, rich man's toys, but even there. The ZF company in Germany, 2017, sold 3.1 million of their ZF 8 HP 8 high performance transmissions and they're a conventional transmission. They have a torque converter just like the Toyota 8 speed does. They are not dual clutch transmissions and a lot of these manufacturers they're starting to shy away from the dual clutch transmissions because of maintenance, software and just plain breakdowns. They're a higher stress transmission. They're a lot more complex with the computer shift and the gears using two dry clutches. For a lot of cars, these CVTs are probably going to be around for quite some time. And as I said, they seem to be perfect on adding the launch gear to them so they can take off fast on that first launch gear and then switch over to the CVT once you get to a certain speed, which is kind of interesting because what that does is it puts most of the strain on the gear that's solid. They can actually make the transmission lighter and not as heavy duty because it's not taking the big strain of taking off from 0 to 20, 25 miles an hour. So then they weigh less and they get even better gas mods, which is the name of the game for these manufacturers. So as time goes on seems that the good manufacturers at least are perfecting these CVT transmissions. Years ago I said to myself I don't like them. Hey maybe one day they'll perfect them. Well the newer ones they seem to be perfecting them a lot better than a couple decades ago when they first came out. Well people are always asking me about Nissan Sentras. This one is a 2007 S. Now that makes a big deal of difference not just the S but that it's a 2007 and that it's a standard transmission with a skull on it. Now he bought this thing years ago for two thousand dollars with eighty something thousand. It's got like a hundred and fourteen thousand on it now. Still runs perfectly fine 
but his wife bought a 2015 Sentra that had the horrendous Nissan Jetco CVT transmission. And guess what? At 92,000 miles, the CVT transmission failed. She got rid of it and then got a used RAV4. She's not gonna get the gas mods that she got in these. She's good, good gas mods. But the RAV4 is gonna run and run and run. If you're looking at one of these, you only had a choice of a CVT or a standard, only buy the standard. Don't buy one with a CVT. They're rolling piles of junk as they age. And of course, if you're buying an 07, you're buying a used one. Now this has a two liter engine. That puts out 126 horsepower. Nissan still calls them their compact car. But in the United States, they call them midsize because of the space that's inside the vehicle. They got a lot of space inside. It's a small car and 126 horsepower in a standard transmission. They're zippy enough. Just consider the original Sentra had 68 horsepower. Now they weren't very fast. They were lighter than these, of course, but it's got enough horsepower for what it goes. And these things get 35 miles a gallon on the highway. They do get phenomenal gas miles. The problem that Nissan had originally with these are, these are interference engines. They had timing belts, rubber ones originally. When the rubber one broke, pistons hit the valves. I've had many customers back in the day with any Nissan that had a rubber timing belt with an interference engine, when it broke, because they didn't take care of it, destroyed the engine to a man and a woman. They said, I'll never buy another Nissan. This $30 rubber band timing belt broke and that was the end of my car. Well, guess what? This has a timing chain in it. Now this one still works fine being an 07, but his previous one was also an 07, but he used it for deliveries. It had 240,000 miles on it and it still had the original timing chain and it still ran and he gave it to his brother who's still driving the thing. As long as they have timing chains and you change the oil regularly because the oil that lubricates your engine also lubricates the timing chain you don't have any worries with these engines but again these older ones are better than the newer ones 1999 the French company, Renault, took over Nissan. And they've been trying to sell them back and forth for years. And Mitsubishi got in the mix. As soon as they did, the quality started going down. But like anything else, it took time. So in this old seven, it was still a good car with a standard transmission. Now, if you got a CVT, you want to be a pile of junk. And I guarantee you, it's probably not on the road anymore. Nobody's gonna spend five, six grand putting another tranny on one of these things. They'll just junk it. He paid two grand for this thing years ago, and it's still running. And with this standard transmission he's a smart man he got a good deal but if you know nothing about cars and you're gonna buy a used one listen to old scotty don't buy any of the new ones they've had head gasket problems the cvt transmission still stink quality just Back in the day when they only had 68 horsepower, I saw some of these Sentras with three, 400,000 miles on them. After Renault took over, a few years after this one, the head gaskets would blow at 100 something thousand miles. The CVT transmissions would generally break even before that. So, you got to be real careful if you're looking at one of these. But if you're smart like he was, and you can get a standard transmission S for a couple of grand with 80,000 miles, it could be a good car. The Japanese call them compact cars. We Americans call them midsize. And we call them midsize because they got a lot of room inside. They're basic cars, but they're not that basic inside. You can see they've got all kinds of creature comforts in them. They are Japanese cars after all. The AC still blows. Pretty cold. These are well-made cars. If you get the right one, just make sure you got a 2.0 S with a standard transmission. He's got all his motorcycle stuff in here, but you can see it's a small car and it's short, but you can fit a reasonable amount of stuff in it. It's not like a Camry or an Accord, but got his motorcycle stuff in it. The trunk goes to back here. They couldn't do any better with a short snot here. It's only so much space there because they reserved it for the passenger room and they're quite comfortable for a compact car. The man who owns this vehicle, like he said, he had another 2007 that he had 240,000 miles but he admitted he should have listened to my video because he lowered it and it rode like crap and he messed with the exhaust and then it was loud as crap and he wished he hadn't have done that but truth be told like i said he gave it to his brother his brother's still driving the thing around it's running at 240,000 miles just like the skull cap one here his other one was a standard transmission and if you crunch the numbers in the united states today 96 percent of americans drive automatic transmission 
transmissions. Their good cars are only for 4% of the driving population, and that's not really a way to have a successful model. If the only good ones are the standard ones, and only 4% of the population drive them, good luck on that one. It kind of reminds me when I just read about electric cars in California. It turns out that 20% of the people that have gotten electric cars in California said they'll never get another electric car. They don't like the experience, and that's in California, where they got a lot of electric charges and stuff. It just doesn't fit the American lifestyle. 20% of those people, those are people who are interested in it. Think about the average American. They don't give a crap about electric cars. So if 20% of the people in California aren't going to be driving the electric cars anymore, hey, what luck are these going to have selling a standard transmission car to 4% of the population? So it's no wonder that people with modern Sentras are often left with a bad taste in their mouth because 96% of them are buying them with the crappy Jatco CVT transmissions. He got lucky on his wife's. It went out 7,000 miles before the warranty was up and it was a $5,000 job but he only had to pay the $100 copy. It took him three weeks or so to do it. That shows you they don't hold up but the standard transmission ones do. So let's take it for a test drive and see what it does. Now well, let's start it up. Start try up. No questions about that. And does the gear shift to shake? No, it's smooth as can be. And now the low tire pressure lights on. The sensors on these wheels are always going out. Most people just ignore it. Now this still has the original shocks and struts on it. And it doesn't ride all that bad. He was thinking about getting them changed, but people wanted too much money. So he's riding it the way it is for now. Now we'll take it on our torture chamber here. The Rhode Island bumpy road. Yeah, you're gonna feel it because it's got a lot of years on it, but Truth be told, this thing rides a lot smoother than that Model Y Tesla that I drove down this very same road. For a compact car, the mileage it's got on it, it's really not bad. Hey, going down a normal road, it handles perfectly fine. Nissan's always had decent handling, and of course the S model that this is has the best handling you're ever going to get out of a Sentra. So let's try out the old first gear, let's see what this baby can do. You get gas? It's got plenty enough. It's not a race car by any stretch of the imagination, but it's fun to drive. Now, if you know anything about cars, you realize the clutch is starting to slip on this, but he's got a friend and he gets it done cheaply enough on his old one, the one that has 240, and it's time for one in this one, but it's still totally drivable if you don't get on it. So, as you can see, they're good running cars and they last if you get a standard transmission and don't mind throwing a clutch in and once in a while. But like I said, 96% of Americans drive automatics. They would get the horrible Jatco automatic transmission like his wife did in her 2015 when it went out at 80,000 miles or so, you don't want to mess around with one of those things. In certain situations like this, the S is a standard transmission, a solid two liter engine in it that, yeah, it's an interference engine, but it's got a timing chain. Doesn't have any problems with it. The other one that's got 240,000 miles that he gave to his brother, that had a timing chain. Did he ever change it? No. Does it make any noise yet? No. So that one's still running too. And learn from his mistake with the previous one. Don't lower them. Don't try to make a race car out of them. They're good. Japanese call them compact. We call them midsize with a standard transmission. If you're forced into buying one with an automatic transmission, make sure you get the extended warranty and don't keep it a mile over the extended warranty or you'll be sorry. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.